After nine months, 37 games, and one of the craziest seasons in living memory, the finishing line is in sight. But how will it all end? This is your penultimate eSpurs podcast. Come on, you Spurs. 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 Hi, guys. Welcome back to the eSpurs podcast, your weekly fix of all things THFC. Um, as always, whether you're a regular listener or joining us for the first time, welcome to the eSpurs pod. Don't forget to subscribe to the show, guys, via iTunes or Acast. Uh, and make sure you get every new episode direct as it's released. We're also across your social media platforms on Twitter and Instagram at the underscore Spurs and check us out on facebook.com forward slash eSpurs page. We're also on Google Plus, YouTube, Pinterest and Tumblr for the links to all eSpurs platforms. As we always say, just head to the website. It's www.eSpurs.blogspot. .co.uk. Tonight on the East Coast podcast, we'll be looking back at a damp squib of a game at a red hot White Hart Lane on Sunday. I'll be putting your social media questions to the panel on all things THFC. And to finish tonight, we'll preview our final game of the season on Sunday against a possibly relegation threatened Newcastle. Um, so before we talk Tottenham, a few reminders for everybody. The Eastburs website is still looking for new writers to add to our existing team, guys. So whether you're a serious writer or a, a fan looking for a new hobby, get in touch with us. We're looking for writers to provide us with opinion pieces, match reviews and previews. So if all that sounds like something you'd be interested in, get in touch with us via email. The address for that is e-spurs at live.co. UK. We also want to hear where you guys are listening to us from and how your support for Spurs began. So whether you're UK based or you listen to us from the other side of the world, we want to know about it. Just contact us by email at the same address. That's e-spurs at live.co.uk and we'll do our best to read out as many as we can. Um, lastly, a reminder not to miss next week's podcast not only is it our last regular East Spurs podcast of the season but we've got loads planned to make sure we send you off on your summer holidays in good spirits we'll be holding our own end of season awards looking back at the best parts of the season and um, well worth subscribing to us via Acast and via iTunes so on to this week's podcast and unlike Spurs at the weekend we're putting out a full strength team this week it's Jason, Ricky, John and Ian how you doing lads? Hello, mate, mate. Just, just watching all the fun at West Ham. <laughs> I hear they might have a tricky journey home, Jase. Yeah, it looks, like, it looks like West Ham are bottling it at the moment. <laughs> Quite Maybe. literally. But yeah, I mean, so much to speak about from the weekend and, of course, going on tonight and tomorrow night. There's a Sunderland game tomorrow night, which, of course, could have a direct impact on our game at the weekend. Might take a lot of the pressure off us, depending on that result tomorrow night. And, of course, last game of the, the season at the Lane, John. Um, but aside from the game, there was one really special moment at half time wasn't there there really really was yeah it was uh, uh, it just it just filled me with such pride in terms of you know the people that work behind the scenes at the club and how the the wonder of social media have got you know the story of young marshall jansen noticed and then to get him into the ground and get him onto the pitch with his dad and that and it was just uh, it was one of those moments where unfortunately well i say unfortunately we'll remember that more than what we remember from the game really because Obviously, we lost, but it was one of those moments where you could just feel such pride. Yeah, you know, if anything to do, every, everyone and everything that's connected to this club because they don't have to do things like that. You know, they can keep, they can, you know, they can fob it off or keep it quiet. But to do what they've done and to make his dream come true and to interview him and to hear the Park Lane sing, sign him up, it was just, <laughs> it was uh, honestly, it was a real moment that will live with me for a long, long time because. Yeah. You know, I was there with one of my boys and, you know, he, he's uh, he was stood next to me at half time and he's like, you're all right, Dad. I'm like, I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. I just, <laughs> I gave him an extra tight squeeze and just, it just makes you, it makes you really thankful for your health and yeah. also just how much of an inspiration young Marshall is. And it was one of those moments where, you know, tears were rolling down my face and there, I was looking around me and there was a lot of other people who were, you know, were clearly getting choked up. And it, yeah, it was just a, an amazing, amazing moment. Which will it will go down in in the uh, Wild Lane folklore really, and it's probably one of my highlights of the season really, from being inside that ground and and seeing that you know that young man's dream come true. It really was a, a special special moment. Certainly was, you know, smile big enough to fill the lane. It was, you know, and and the you know all clubs, all top flight clubs get a lot of stick, don't they? And um, you often forget. It's so easy to forget 
special things that they do and Spurs in particular do um, like this. And Ian, you was also at the game, wasn't you? And um, I mean, what really was just watching from TV, I got that feeling, the hairs standing up on the back of your neck, just seeing that lad, the smile he had on his face. And, and you do realise, you know, it, it takes something like that to realise the, the good things that these these football clubs do do. And I mean, that guy, that young lad's going to have that memory for the rest of his life. Definitely. And, you know, I'm not ashamed to say that, that I had a tear or four in my eye and with 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 pride and, you know, to see that young lad, you know, run on the pitch with 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 Moussa Dembele and and, and have a kick around and all the, the subs that were warming up, you know, stop what they were doing and, and, and come over and supported him. And, and, and as John said, it, 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 it warms the heart. It, it, you know, you realise that that okay, you know, you know, there is a there is a corporate image to to, to to sport and and to football, but that was a human story, and it was and it was a story that touched your heart, and and, and as John said, it, it made you proud to to be there to witness it and to know that that, that your club and the, and the club we all love, you know, is capable of of, of showing that humanity to to, to a young man. Who who is who must be an inspiration to us all? He must be. Absolutely, just makes you realise how unimportant sport is at a time like that, you know, um, and how proud it made me as a Spurs fan watching that of that little lad and of the club that had done that for him. So, you know, if anybody from Spurs is listening, fantastic stuff, lads. Well done and um, brilliant stuff. Andy, as you just said, if anyone from Spurs is listening, I'd just like to. Give a special mention to Paul Coit, the guy that does the interviews at half time. Yeah. I think he handled that with such class and yeah. he, he he you know, he added to it the the experience and the spectacle of it and he, he he put the he tweeted out a couple of times how proud he was to be involved with Marshall and you know, if we've got play, uh, people like that, like I was saying, who are behind the scenes who, you know, don't get the the headlines and the sixty grand a week and stuff, you know. There's plenty of people at the club who, who, who love, who love doing what they're doing and are proud of doing what they're doing. And to be able to, even you know, it's like ten minutes of his time, but that will mean such a lot for forever for for Marshall and for his family. And it's just, I'd like to say thank you really to everyone who who uh, managed to get the ball rolling and get the young boy there and onto the pitch. Yeah, here, here. Well said, lads, and a touch of class. Well done to everybody involved. Brilliant stuff. Um, so a lot still to play for going on in and around the league. But of course, we're here to talk about the Spurs Southampton game on on Sunday. And if you thought the, uh, the hashtag Spursy had gone away, well, it's it's back with a vengeance after after Sunday. Let's hope it's just a, a temporary blip. I'm sure it was. But Jay, first up on the podcast this week and um, with second place still to play for. Jay, was this the performance that you expected? Uh, well, I thought the first, first 20, 25 minutes was fine. Um, I thought we started quite well at a nice tempo. We looked like it was was the traditional Tottenham we've seen most of the season. I thought Ericsson had a really good chance that a player of his ability had a hell of a lot of goals to aim at and, and Foster made a decent save. But really, I thought that was a chance we should have taken. Yeah. And then when Sonny put us in front, you could see us you know, going on to to win the game but they kind of scored out of the blue and from that moment on we, we struggled and whether they're you know obviously not being in England I don't know how hot it really was and when you live here and it's a temperature of 40 degrees <laughs> I thought 25 degrees is a bit cold and it was astonished to see a drinks break and things like that going on but you know from that moment really once they equalised we never never really looked like getting anything from the game and second half particularly I think was really disappointing because we just didn't work work their goalkeeper until what was it the very last touch of the game when Chadley had that chance but um, you know it was a strange thing that drinks break because the, the second half I thought we were just starting to to not necessarily get on top of the game but we were just starting to look like a little spell where we had a couple of corners and was just starting to pen them in we have a drinks break and within a couple of minutes of the drinks break we're, we've gone two one down, so yeah. it certainly wasn't the the best best bit of timing for us. But no, a little bit disappointed, and maybe just that that feeling of we can no longer win the league. You know, maybe a li- little bit of that took it out of a took took something from our intensity, and maybe it affected us a little bit more mentally than we we thought it really would do. 
Yeah, it seemed to, exactly as you say there, Jay, after that water break. Also, I think um, Son going off changed the game. I think I thought at the time he was having a pretty good game. One of one of the, you know, um, the best players out there for Spurs on, on Sunday. But he took Son off and it just seemed to, to go a bit flat after that. Personally, I would have taken Mason off um, from the, the midfield that was out there. But um, yeah, I mean, John, what did you make? Welcome back to the podcast first up. Um, what did you make of the, the performance on Sunday? I was gutted, really, because because of the result that followed in the Man City and Arsenal. At the time, after at full time, I thought, oh, it, it can still work out all right because I know the like like you just said, the players' chance of winning the league is gone. But for us as fans, and I know I don't want to seem like I'm not adhering to what Potch said and being you know all consumed with what Arsenal were doing, but it still does matter to us, doesn't it? I don't yeah. think there's any fan out there that w- would say, oh, yeah, no, I wouldn't mind if we finished third now and yeah. they were second. It would be a gutting way to end the season. <laughs> and it would feel like, even though we've ultimately achieved our aim in terms of Champions League qualification, because for me, that was our ultimate ceiling at the start of the season. I never thought we'd achieve more than that, and we haven't done. But we could have done a lot worse than what we've done. So, I'm still happy, obviously. I think the only thing that's been missing so far is that sort of utopia moment that we had at the Man, uh, at Man City a few years ago with a crouch header. Because yeah. of the way we qualified for the Champions League, there wasn't that one moment, that one goal. I was hoping that 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 sort of feeling might have been replicated or created on on Sunday, whereby we won and therefore it was done. You know, the, the race for second was done and that would have been our moment and it would have been a, a a really nice way to finish the season at home. But as it is, we're doing it the way that, you know, <laughs> doing it the hard way since 1882, as we've all said many, many times before. And the, the, I mean, the way the game went, I agree. I think Mason was on the pitch a little bit too long. Because just because of the way the game was going, it's not like they, we were getting bullied in central midfield. I didn't think. No, it wouldn't avert to take Mason off and bring on a more offensive player. Like I know Chadley came on for him eventually, I believe it was. But to bring on Chadley or NG a little bit earlier, I think might have given us a bit of a given them a bit of a shock and give us a bit of a shake up that we needed really. Because you know, especially second half, there weren't anything clear cut. It was nice, you know, tippy tappy football getting to the edge of the box and then. They were breaking on us, and that's you know that was our undoing eventually. But yeah, a little bit disappointed, really, to tell you the truth. But you know, all all in all, it's been a good season, and one game's not going to uh, cloud my judgment on how I feel about how this season has gone. No, absolutely, it's been a fantastic season, as it, as we've mentioned many times before. I tell you what, I was also Rick impressed with was the quality um, of the Southampton side. I mean, under Kuman, he's got these. I mean. Oh, of course, they're playing for Europa League still, but he's got these guys working their socks off. Yeah, no, he's a very, very good manager, Ronald Koeman. And um, he always seems to, s- to speak well about Spurs, which is nice to see. Um, plays a great brand of football. It was frustrating, really. I thought it just really highlights how much we miss Dembele and Deli Alli. Um In the seven matches we've been without Dembele, we've only won one and lost four. So it just shows you how important Dembele is to our side and if we're being completely honest it really exposed just the lack of depth we've got in the squad um I don't ever like to dig out players of our own um but unfortunately Ryan Mason coming in I think we all were kind of a little bit fearful um would he be good enough to kind of come in and make a difference you know he had a very good season last year but um with the formidable partnership which Dyer and Ali have formed, um, we just seem to have gone up a level. And that shows it by our position in the league, uh, the brand of football we're playing. And unfortunately, I think we're at a time now as a club where we're outgrowing certain players and the likes of the Masons, the Carrolls, possibly the Bentalevs, we haven't seen enough of them to make a judgment this season, look like they're going to be left behind. But um, I don't think you can take anything away from Southampton's performance. I thought they played very, very well. Um, I thought, if I'm being completely honest, I thought in, towards the end, I thought they were lucky to get the three points, but we certainly didn't do enough to win it. Um, and it just was a, it's a concern when you look at the bench of the lack of options we have. And I'm sure in the summer, that will be something we're going to be addressing, if not already, because sitting in second, a club that sits in second, going to be playing in the Champions League, we have to have some options to bring off the bench. We know we've only got one recognised striker. And we've said it before on this pod, if we didn't have Kane in terms of the goals, where would we be? Yeah, it's um, it's a worrying thought, isn't it, really? I mean, Son, has, I, I think, has done really well in his first season at, at the club. He's, um, you know, scored us a few really important goals. So he certainly chipped in with, with the goals there. What have you, Ian, what have you made? We only saw half an hour of him on, on Sunday. What have you made of um, Nji, um on Sunday and overall um, during his time at Spurs? I think he's got bags of pace. 
I think he's he's got a trick or two in him. This season, as as, as we all know, it has been decimated by that horrendous injury he got. You know that that's a that's a evil injury that you get when you when you do your ligaments in your knee. And I, I don't think we we we've seen the best of him. You know, I think he will be a decent squad player, uh, get a decent pre-season under him. You know, under Poch and his and his team and his um and his coaching staff and and his fitness coaches. And we'll see where we come. I, I think he'll be a squad player. Um, I don't see him necessarily making the start in eleven. But hey, if he if he pulls out a couple of decent performances at, at the start of the season, then we're going to need every, every every member of the playing staff to to guide us through all of the competitions that we'll be in next year. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, obviously we're starting to be taken seriously now this season because of the performances. Um, there seems to be a new focus at the club. So pundits, um, the media are starting to take Spurs um, seriously now. However, Sunday's performance shows you there's still that that flaky element um, there that, that sometimes can be exposed. And we've seen, seen that against Newcastle, haven't we, and a few other games this season. In terms of the game on Sunday, that's the type of game that we need to win, isn't it, to, to really make that next step up and for people to to really take us seriously especially when you see the performance that Southampton put in I, I I agree I think that you know from what I saw on Sunday I think they got to the stage and I don't know whether you ever done it you know I, I know I know we've got some 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 people that, that, that like doing their fitness on, on the pod um, and sometimes you just hit the wall yeah you know, it comes to, to fitness and I, and I and I and I agree with everything the lads have said tonight you know with with regards to how the game started how it panned out and, and how good the opposition were for me I, I would just like to add that we run out of, you know we run out of juice you know there was no, there was mm-hmm. nothing left in the tank you know and, and, it, and it was a bloody hot day because you know sat in an all stand you know I, I come out there like a beetroot but <laughs> it, it was it's been a long season and and we've talked about other potch sides that 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 you know perhaps run out of steam and and I just got the impression that that the Chelsea game that, that, that talked about last week, I think mentally, uh, physically, it, it, it drained us. And, 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 I, and I think that, I think Eric Dyer alluded to that, you know, during the week, that, that they put their heart and soul into, the, into that game and the West Brom game. And I, and I think a lot of the players now are running on empty. Yeah, it certainly looked looked that way, didn't it? On on Sunday, certainly batteries seemed flat. I mean, in terms of the weather, I guess you could argue same for both sides. However, you know the intensity that we've put in all season um, certainly seemed to show. And and Jay, another player that's that's been mentioned um, with regards to Sunday in the last few games, and I hate criticising this guy because to me he's the top top notch. But another one that's been mentioned was Larice. Um, been a bit sloppy, isn't he? Last few games, I think it's fair to say. Uh, great goalkeeper, fantastic catching, but at the time he's got the kick of a Gary Doherty, isn't he? Um, can't seem to kick the ball for Toffee sometimes. However, he's saved us more times than than you can count. So, um, do you think it's just another case of hitting the wall at the end of the season? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm a massive, massive Hugo fan. Anyone that knows me will, would know that. Big believer in Hugo, and he has a fantastic season. He makes saves that other keepers don't make. But you know, as, as people were, I think, very quick to jump on Ryan Mason Saturday, it, it's fair to say um, Hugo's made. If I think about it, Kieran Gibbs' goal at the Emirates, he should have done better with. Yeah. Then we then we lost to Newcastle when he let one under his arm in the in the ninetieth minute. The the uh, Sanchez goal in the two two draw. The Antonio header at Upton Park, the goal at West Brom last week, and you could say certainly the first one at Southampton this week. Mm. Now that, that's not trying to dig him out or suggest that he's not a, the goalkeeper that we all think he is, but you know you can't be beyond blame. I mean, poor old Ryan Mason, he comes in Sunday and he's replaced Ali and Dembele, who are, are what nominated as the two of the f- top four box-to-box midfield players in Europe. Yeah. The poor bloke hasn't started a game in the Premier League for four months, and everyone gets on his case. And yet you're thinking, you know, even that first goal, Toby was poor for it as well. Let's, let's be honest, you know, Toby was three or four yards off his man and, and in the wrong position, but we'll, we'll all jump on Ryan Mason. So, yeah, you know, when you, you, you look at the games like that, you, you've still got to look at the whole team and say, 
Hugo could have done better with that first goal and Toby could have done better with the first goal. I thought Eric Dyer could have done better to close down Davis for the second goal. Um, so, you know, you've you got to sometimes spread the blame out a bit and not be blind to, to some players with the odd mistake whilst criticising everybody, your Carl Walkers and your Ryan Masons, for, for when things go wrong. Yeah, it's a great point you make. And it's so easy, isn't it, to, to pick out individual players. Um, Kyle Walker, I thought, again, was, was a little bit sloppy on, on Sunday. But then, you know, most of them were. And I thought, other than Son, and, and I thought Lamella had a great game also up until um, the first Southampton goal. I thought Lamella and Son were pretty much our, our two best players. Um, Kane had very little service up to him. You know, scraps to feed off, so it was tough for Kane. Um, just, just one of those games, wasn't it? Um, John, just to finish up on on Sunday's game, does it matter? And should we expect more from from the team with that Arsenal um, second place prize still at stake? It's a tough question, really, because it's more. It's definitely something that's more important for us as a fan base. The players have achieved their objectives now, and it it just goes to show that you know maybe there are a few that. Although they, I'm sure they're aware of the rivalry, it obviously doesn't mean as much to the players as it does to us, which you can understand. But what worries me now is it would be, you know, if we did finish below them now, that's what this season would be remembered for ultimately, especially amongst the media and, and their fans, you know. And, and yeah. Uh, well, I think we've been, <laughs> Ricky will tell you, we've been trolled enough recently. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need no more of that. So it'd be nice, just not even not even because I wouldn't rub it in their face. I'd, I'd not that, I'm trying not to be that kind of supporter, you know. So. But just to that satisfaction. I think, yeah, of it's I, more of an achievement, isn't it, than any sort of gloating, right? I think it's just that yeah. that sense of achievement, the fact that we've done it for the first time in goodness knows how long. Well, yeah. I mean, and it has been a, a, a season where we've done a lot of things that we haven't done for so, so long. You know, like yeah. top scorers in the league, top defence in the league, even stuff like if you talk about individual games, like um, winning at home to Man United for the first time in 15 years or whatever it was, you know. So hopefully it could be that we can add that... Um, the Arsenal to that list, you know, of things that we've done this season for the first time in a while. So, like I said, I'd be I'd be disappointed first and foremost if we didn't get at least a point at Newcastle, regardless of who's third, because that's a game where even with like a couple of players missing, considering the predicament Newcastle were in, and I know I probably said this before we before we played them at home, I predicted we'd win six one, didn't I? So <laughs> it's uh, it's one of those where we really should be winning anyway. If you think about it, you've got the team who are second in the league currently against the team who are eighteenth. So you know, mm -hmm. the, I'm not saying it's a for, it should be a foregone conclusion because the Premier League don't work that way, but we really should be getting an, a point at least anyway. So let's just hope that that does happen because you know. What I wouldn't be able to stomach is them saying, "Oh, you've had your best season ever and still finished below us," you know, because they, <laughs> because that's what that you know that had come within <laughs> seconds of the full time whistle that had come and it would just leave a sour taste in the end, right at the end of, a, of what's been a really really good season. So it's important for me personally. It's important for every, all of our fans, I'd imagine. Lads, let's do some questions, shall we? Um, as always, guys, we. Um, get you guys to send in your questions to us on uh, at E underscore Spurs on Twitter and the Facebook page, E Spurs page. And once again, you guys have been great getting your responses, your questions into the E Spurs team. And as always, we're going to fire these at the team tonight. So first up, let's go to let's go to Ian first up from E Spurs Australia. Um, this is um, Lachlan Peters, the guy who um, manages our E Spurs Australia account. He asks Ian, can Kane be a little too selfish at times? Oh, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. <laughs> um, when you've been a solo striker and you've been used to, to, to playing up in a system on your own, I often think that that goes with the territory. Mm. And, and I think that you look at some of the goals he scored, you know, especially the ones outside the box and, and, and from angles, you know, you, you think to yourself, why not? There, when I used to play football, you know, I, I never used to mind when my strikers were, were were selfish because, you know, at least they've got the, the, the confidence to have a go. Yeah. You know, on, on the flip side of that, if you've made, you know, a, you know, a, a, a 60, 70 yard sprint, to, to, to get yourself into space and, and, and you've got an open goal in front of you and you don't get the pass, I can understand how other players might get, you know, a bit, a bit miffed about that. But on, on the face of it, you know, you, you, you know, if you don't shoot, you don't score. Yeah. So, I, you know, and I think that we'd have been, I think if we'd have been sitting here and, and Harry had scored 10, but he'd made 10, 
I don't know. Would 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 we be you know would we still be in the position that that we were in in being second in the league? I, yeah. I don't know. So my my answer to to our friend from down under is I'll take the selfishness as long as there's an end product. Absolutely, and I think you could maybe even argue that some of the best strikers um, in the history of the game are the ones that are selfish almost. You know, the yeah. likes of the Shearers, um, yeah. you know, they're the ones that have that, you know, tunnel vision almost, you know, yeah. and, and see nothing else but the goal. And I, I, there was a point on, you know, on Sunday during the game where I, I thought, Son was maybe being a little bit too selfish just before he, he poked the ball in the net. So, you know, I guess it can, can work both ways. But I think the best strikers are the ones, and I can see what Lachlan's saying, because there are times when you think, you, you know, you're sitting in front of the TV shouting, pass it, pass it. But there's also times when he, he belts the ball in from, you know, the edge of the area and you, what a, what yeah. a goal, you know. So yeah. I'd certainly rather him be selfish than, than reduce his goal tally and, and, in that way, so can can absolutely see what he's saying there. Top stuff. Okay, next question to let's go to Rick. Um, this is from Ray Grit, Rick, and he asked, "We've lost twenty points from winning positions this season, more than any other Premier League team. How can we improve this?" We just need to go behind and then come back. <laughs> <laughs> simple. No, well, simple. No, uh, to be fair, that is a it's a worrying stat, and it's worrying stat when you think that's a team sitting in second. And uh, where would we be with those points? Well, we won the league if we didn't drop as many points as we did um, it's incredibly frustrating but again I think that also shows Andy that whilst we've praised the fact of having such a young team at the same time also it just shows that little bit lack of naivety we question the possibility of maybe not bringing in experienced heads would that make a difference down the line and I think maybe that's what we're missing from this young Spurs side you know don't get me wrong it's fantastic having players like Ali um, the Canes, the fearless players that are willing to go for brick walls for you. But at the same time, you have to have that bit of leadership in there, the same as the United team did with Roy Keane to say, look, we're in a game. Um, concentration levels that have to be spot on. And we've seen it a lot with Spurs where we go ahead and we do concede literally straight away or the opposite. So it definitely is a mentality thing. And it's so that we are going to have to address in the summer if we do honestly next season want to take the league seriously and obviously we've got the Champions League and the Cups to come because I think like a lot of fans next season we want to have a tilt at something it's been a fantastic season in terms of the position we find ourselves in Um, but at the same time I still think this Spurs side it would be an absolute travesty if we don't in the coming years try and win trophies um, and compete again for the title so to do that you have to have experienced players around and hopefully in the summer Poch will get the players in that will add that little bit of experience because there's no doubt going back to the question about the points dropping it's been the naivety of it yeah it's, it's such a strange one isn't it because when you look at all of the other stats they're all very positive you know best goals best defense best um everything else and then you look at that stat and it doesn't fit with the rest and it's 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 such a strange one um but all, obviously something that needs to be improved so you know great question ray um next question let's go to jay for this one again this is from from ray he's on fire this week he asks um do you think son could be the answer with regards to another center forward at the club I don't think he's the answer in terms of another centre forward, but there's certainly plenty of goals in the boy. I mean, Deli Alley's missed those last two games and we think we'll miss him, but Son's come in and scored against Chelsea and scored a, a really good goal on, on Sunday. Yeah. So I, I think there's there's a lot more to come from Son. I think when we, we bought him, we, we perhaps hoped we'd see a little bit more this season, but as the season's gone on, I think he's had the injury problems and things like that. Um, but I think we'll definitely see a better player and a more consistent player next year. My only one worry is, I would have said, with the benefit of a proper Pochettino pre-season, but of course we face the the big possibility that he'll go to the Olympics. So it mm-hmm. could well be that we, we miss him from the middle of July. And the, I think the Olympics is what starts on the 7th of August and doesn't end till possibly the 20th of August. And so that period where you really want him to be challenging for a place and, and, and going through a proper pre-season, he won't be there. And others may well get the jump on him at the start of next season. And he could well find himself struggling to get game time early next season. But um, I certainly think there's a hell of a lot more to come from him. I thought his, his goal Sunday told you that, just the composure and that that he took it with and the confidence that he yeah. took it with. The same with the confidence he's, he slid the ball in at Chelsea. So I think there's certainly a much better... Uh, performer in him next season than we've seen this year but whether we'll get the the real benefit of him next year or it may even be second half of next season before 
we, we get the best of him. In terms of that front three, Jay, the Lamella, Ali and Ericsson, are there any of those three that you would leave out in favour of Son or would you stay with those three as we were this season? It's really difficult, isn't it? Because if you leave a Lamella out, you leave that work rate and he is one of the big assists. Yeah. And you leave Ericsson out and he can get assists. But the one thing that Son does a little bit like Deli Ali is he will burst into the box and run beyond the striker. And I think, you know, we we definitely need somebody more to do that. Whereas Lamella will look for the pass and Ericsson will look for the pass rather than making that run. And we all know that the benefit of making that run, we saw that with Ericsson at Manchester City and that there are times you wish he'd get in the box that little bit more. But of course, if you're going to get in the box, then who's going to give you the ball? So it's getting that whole team teamwork and, and things like that together, isn't it? But you definitely need players that are going to run beyond Kane, which also helps him when you've only got that one striker up front. It's, um, it's a nice problem to have, though, isn't it? A bit, a bit of, um, we talk about, the depth in the squad and the bench and he's certainly one that adds to the bench when he's not playing um great to bring on as a sub as we've seen so that all works yeah, well I think, you know i think when we've been talking earlier in the season about game changers and we need that game changer off the bench yeah i think he's the type of player that may well be a, a bigger game changer next year and not that he'll do it week in week out but you certainly see him coming on and having a much bigger impact next year that's for sure yeah, he's got the quality in him, isn't he? And um, got a bit of pace in him as well, which I like. I like him when he's running at the players. Um, fantastic to see. And he's got the, the right attitude, I think. Um, last question of the night goes to John. And it's it relates to the talking point this week, um, which is our position in the league and our aim for next season. And this is from Denny Mike on Facebook, John. And he asked, next season, will top four qualification alone be good enough? I think it will in terms of, you know, being consistent and doing it consistently because for us to qualify for the Champions League back to back is something that we haven't done before. So I would I would say so. So I mean if we could, you know, maybe add a trophy or, or two in there as well, then obviously that'd be good as well. But yeah, I think, you know, I don't want it to keep being a one off every five, six years we get in there. You know, even though we did we did do well in it last time. It's uh, it's quickly forgotten, isn't it? So I think for us to be consistently in there means we can you know, attract these players, keep them, you know, keep the world-class players that will come win with uh, with Champions League football and then build from there. You know, we've, we've got this, obviously, the project with the stadium and everything else going on and we don't really want to be a, a Champions League yo-yo club. So I would say that, you know, for us to be in it again, yeah, it'd definitely be a step forward. Because like I said, we haven't done it before and it's the kind of thing that we do need to to start doing really if we are going to maintain our position up there. You know, we can't, like, we can't be drifting in and out of it and... You, we don't, oh, as much as I I love any kind of European football, the, and I do like being in the Europa League. It's one of those where obviously if you had a choice, you'd be in the Champions League every time. <laughs> yeah. So for us to keep flitting between the two competitions, we, it's not you know it's not the worst thing. It's not like we're we're only in Europe once every fifteen years. You know we're not West Ham. So I think we could we could be proud of the fact that we've done it this time. And yeah, go again and uh, hopefully get in there. And yeah, I think it would definitely be seen as a good season. Yeah, consolidation, some um, some more building next season. And I think we're probably going to see during the course of this building works of the new stadium over the next three, four years, the the aim probably will be top four, um, just to get us through to that, that stage where we're in our new stadium, we're settled, got a bit more money behind us. And then I think, we'll probably see another push from the club to, to take us up to the next step, which will re- hopefully regularly compete in for the league. But um, I certainly think top four, we obviously don't want to become like that lock down the road where it's our, our be all and end all, you know, that top four cup at the end of the season. Um, but I think most Spurs fans would say for the next few seasons, that would be, that would be reasonable. That would be a good achievement. Top four, um, get us into the new stadium, build from there, I think. Um, see where it goes. It's exciting, exciting times. Those are your questions, guys. As always, get them into us at E underscore Spurs and on Facebook, E Spurs page, all one word. Brilliant stuff, as always. Thanks to everybody who sent those into us this week. Let's look at the Newcastle game, shall we? One more game to go. Where's where's the time gone, lads? Eh? It's um, last game of the season, Newcastle at... Uh, St James's of course a lot depends on tomorrow it might become a completely dead rubber of a game on on Sunday we're we're yet to find out Um, Newcastle ever undefeated in their last five so certainly under Benitez um, added a bit of steel to the to the team hasn't he he's um, got them playing a bit and we've seen a few of our old players out there on on form as well so 
you know, I think they're going to give it a go no matter what. They'll want to send their fans off on a high. Rick, what should we expect from this one? Well, again, it all, like you just said, Andy, it's all dependent on the when, on Wednesday's tie with Sunderland. I'm surprised how many Spurs fans are conf- confident because <laughs> Spurs being Spurs, I don't ever want to sit here and predict the cast iron result. But if we're being brutally honest, if we can't go up to Newcastle and get a point, then there's something really wrong. I know obviously we've had not a great run of form recently, um, but this team should be more than capable of going up to Newcastle and getting something. You know, we've only lost twice on our travels all season, yeah. that being to West Ham United. So we wanted a response from the players. That's the most important thing. You know, we're not stupid enough. We know we've not got our best side out there. You know, I've already said how much we're missing Ali and Dembele. But um, you look at Newcastle as a team, you know, there shouldn't be a problem in Spurs going up there, not only looking to obviously just see out the game, but also get a, re- a positive result. But I think like a lot of Spurs fans in the back of their minds, the Andros Townsend thing does niggle me a little bit <laughs> because I think he'll be wanting to prove maybe Potts wrong as to why we sold him. But I don't think, like I say, if I'm being honest, I don't think Townsend would get near this Spurs side. Um, Lamella has been phenomenal this season. Um, he's fully justified the reason why to keep him at the time when there was a little bit of kind of, to and fro as to whether Lamella would stay or, you know, Townsend might be the person that would fill his boots, you know. But, um, no, it's going to be a tough, tough game still. But, like I say, it's all dependent on tomorrow night, really. If Sunderland can get the result and Defoe does us a favour, then, you know, hopefully the game becomes a bit more easier on the Sunday. But I would never like to sit here and say as a Spurs fan that it's all done because um, it never always seems to be that way. Whenever you think <laughs> we've we've sealed something... There always seems to be that kind of late drama. But hopefully, like I say, it's important mentality-wise to get over the line um, to finish above Arsenal. I didn't have a chance to say it at the beginning of the pod, but for me, it is an important thing. And I know Potts tried. I completely understand what he's saying. From a mentality perspective, we want to be looking higher up the league. And Arsenal, let's not have it wrong, Arsenal finish in the top four. They don't, in the last few years, actually challenge for the title. So he's right what he's saying to a point in terms of that Arsenal shouldn't be our primary focus. But in terms of a mental challenge and a mental step, it would be a massive, massive step forward if we was to finish above Arsenal because it proves that these players have kind of lifted that kind of, I wouldn't say curse, but lifted that kind of mentality that we've had problems, problems with over the years. So it's an important game in terms of that. And um, yeah, I think we can do it quietly confident. <laughs> And Ian, Rick mentioned that he's confident. A lot of the Spurs fans on social media are confident. Do you share that confidence? I think I've supported Tottenham for too long to think that it's all going to be a done deal. Yeah. By the end of the, you know, by the end of the game, I'd like to think that we could we could have one last sort of you know hurrah and and you know get get some some energy back in the tank and then go for it and and, and get the the win. I'm, I'm hoping that. If, if Newcastle are to be relegated, that I hope it's a done deal by the time we get there. Outside of that, this is Spurs, you know, and, and, and I think we'll, you know, I, I hope we're not, you know, we're not up in that upper tier at, at St. James's Park, tuned into phones and radios, <laughs> waiting to see what, see how many, um, you know, how many goals Arsenal have scored. So am I confident? The easy answer is no. Because I'm never confident until it's until <laughs> Matt's tell me that it's right. But you know, I'd like to think that you know we'd like to to return the favour to to Newcastle after after what they did to us in the home fixture. So fingers crossed that we'll get there. Yeah, it's, it's gonna. I mean, it's gonna be a great atmosphere. You would think whatever happens, last game of the season usually is. Um, yeah. And I don't know if anybody knows Lord Sugar out there listening to the show tonight, but if anybody's listening that knows him, will you please take his phone off of him um, before the game so that we don't get any tweets? Um, like the tweet we got a couple of years ago when um, we were fighting for the Champions League. And yeah, I'm sure you know the rest. Um, Jay, in terms of the relegation fight that Newcastle are going through, if Sunderland don't get that win tomorrow, that's going to be one hell of an atmosphere up there on Sunday. Well, it, it can work in all different ways, can't it? Because I think if... If Sunderland relegate them, then Newcastle can come out relaxed, know they're already down and, and play free from the fear yeah. of going down. But then the crowd may well be a, a very different atmosphere then rather than being behind them. They may well be so toxic then against Ashley and the, the Cockney Mafia and, and all those types of things. But then similarly, if, if there is something on the game for Newcastle, 
and for instance we score first it can really affect them and the pressure comes on it can turn the crowd so it's I think it, without a doubt very much depends on on the Sunderland game as to what happens but I mean, can you imagine being relegated by Sunderland and then finding Middlesbrough have gone up in your place? I mean, <laughs> would you compare that to it? It's like, what, Woolwich relegating us and West Ham are promoted in our place. Yeah, I yeah, mean, it, salt it in the wind. A, must be the horrendous thought. And, you know, having lost out so many times for ourselves where we've had food poisoning at West Ham to lose out to Arsenal when we've we've lost a Champions League spot to Chelsea, suddenly some other team has, has suddenly caught the, the full force of what that's like to happen <laughs> to you. I think we'll go to Newcastle with their heads in in a little bit of a better place perhaps than they were on, on Sunday. I think they'll realise that second's important. And, and for me, it's not just second. The, the really important thing for me is to get that points total as our best ever Premier League total. Because if we even if we draw at Newcastle... We've actually got less points this season finishing second than the AVB side that finished fifth. Yeah, yeah. And then you think, well, you know, it's been a brilliant season for us to have Champions League football and so many highlights and things. But you, you still kind of look at the end of the day and think, but we've actually got less points this year than we did under AVB. Mm. So then you do start to count the points that you've lost and think, well, oh, God, if only we hadn't done that, if only we hadn't done that. And rather than being going into the summer 100% happy, there, there will be that if only, if only feel to it. So, and not so much around winning the league. But um, so for me, I think it's really important for the for the club and those players to sit down and be able to say, look, you know, at the end of the day, we got a record points total. And then for all those people that say Tottenham messed it up and bottled it, you can say, well, hold on a minute, we've got more points than we've ever done in the history of the club before. Yeah. So it's not quite the the bottle job that that people say it is. So I, you know, I think we'll see a better Tottenham performance. But, um, you know, it's very difficult to predict because, as we know, you know, there's so much riding on it, possibly for Newcastle. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? You know, two games within the space of a week. You've got Sunderland playing two games. Newcastle have got one game left. Um, anything could happen, lads. But I'm going to ask you, as always, for one final time this season to give us a prediction. Let's go around the table. Let's go first up to Ian. Let's have your prediction for the last game of the season up at Newcastle. 1-1. Well, a 1 1 close, a tight affair, which of course would give us the second place. Um, so that'd be lovely indeed. And John? Well, as you all know, I have not got one prediction right all season. <laughs> so it's You're not going to do it, are you? are not going to go for a 6 1. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go 2 0 to Tottenham. I think, regardless of what happens um, with um, Sunderland tomorrow, Wednesday, I think it's going to be. We're just too good for them. You know, I just think that, you know, I'm hoping the players do realise what, what's riding on this. Like Jay said, chance to get more points than ever and to finish above Arsenal and all the rest of it. And I think there's no reason why, on a ground that we've recently had a really good record on, we can't go up there and get, you know, the, the three points to send everyone connected to the club off happy for the summer. So, yeah, 2 0 Spurs. Nice 2 0 win. I tell you what, we need to keep track of these. Uh predictions next season little league table going on I think we'll have next season <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I've been relegated then I know that for sure. <laughs> championship fodder John championship fodder. <laughs> um, Jay your prediction for Sunday mate I'll go 3-1 Tottenham night off oh. I think we wouldn't that be lovely? I, I, you know, I, I think more or less just to go different from, from Ian and John, but <laughs> I just think, you know, Newcastle, I'm not so sure Sunderland will do Everton. I mean, Everton have been so poor this year, it's untrue, but just the way the season's going, so many twists and turns, I get the feeling Sunderland won't quite put the game or won't put it to bed. So Newcastle will be coming at us and a bit of gung-ho football and, and hopefully we can pick them off a bit like we did at Stoke on the break and it'll be one of those types of games. Don't forget the last two years we've gone there and performed really well, haven't we? We got the, was it 4-0 two years ago? 4-0 or 4-1? Yeah, yeah. We wept in three up there last year, didn't we? So whilst, whilst they've had the, the, the horrible sign on us at White Hart Lane, the last couple of years we've actually gone up there and, and got decent results. And of course, something we haven't mentioned, we've still got that that golden boot that Harry's playing for, of course. Um and uh, a couple of goals on, on Sunday would be lovely. Surely surely getting the golden boot that he deserves. Um, not just for the goals, as I've mentioned, you know, the attitude, I think, just the overall guy that he is. Such a great guy and um, deserves it, deserves every award he gets. The other thing with a golden boot, mate, is with so many people saying we've bottled it, if Harry wins it, will they say that Jamie Vardy bottled it because he missed a penalty? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. <sighs> Last but by no means least, Rick, your prediction for Sunday, mate. I'm going to go with Ian. I think it's going to be 1-1. I, I, if we had Dembele and, and 
Ali in this game, I think we'd be talking about a different story. But depending, obviously, on what happens on the Wednesday night between um, Sunderland and Everton, um, I can see us just seeing it out and getting the point required to finish above Arsenal. And Spurs scoring first or, or coming from behind, Rick? Um, I, see a sc- I see a scoring first, but holding out, conceding, but holding out and getting a point. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Um, it's going to be nervy. It's going to be nervy. It is. Isn't it always? Isn't it always with Spurs? Never a, never a dull moment. Um, I think you can probably count on one hand over the last five, ten years, the amount of games that we've had that aren't nervy. Um, never make it easy today, but um, that's why we love them. And uh, that is your eSpurs podcast for this week. And of course, we'll be back next week for the final eSpurs podcast of the season after the Newcastle game. Uh, we've got loads planned, as I said, including those eSpurs awards uh, and much more. So don't forget to tune in for that and have your say on the podcast this week, guys, via social media. And look out for Extra Time, our Extra Time show, which goes out this week on Saturday at E underscore Spurs, the Twitter account and eSports page, the Facebook account, if you want to get in touch with us. So we're nearly there. One more game to go. But how does the story end? From Jason, Ian, Ricky, John and myself, have a great week, guys. And as always, come on, you Spurs. All right, when it comes to playing football.